Hey there, so in this lesson, I'm gonna to talk to you about creating a shop page on your blog. So there's a lot of different ways that you can set up your actual shop. Um, and I'm not gonna say there's any one way that's better than others. Really what it comes down to is what platform you like, like we all have different things that we like about a certain platform that maybe another platform doesn't do, or we just like how they do it better here. So ultimately you need to go through and kind of do your research on each of the platforms I'm gonna talk about and decide which one of them will be the best option for you to sell your products from. So many people get started um, maybe just doing WooCommerce and where you do like Stripe payments, PayPal directly to yourself, and that's totally fine as well. Um, but in this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about um, using Gutenberg blocks without WooCommerce or any of that, just literally using your WordPress site um, to create the store page, but actually selling your products through a third party vendor platform such as um, Etsy or maybe Gumroad Sendell or a variety of those. Um, so let's hop over here. Um, so this is my shop page. Actually, I just threw this together for the purposes of this training. Um, I hadn't really had one set up because um, it's really important for maximum conversion that the products you create and sell from your blog, that you actually have them embedded in actual blog posts where they make sense, like so satisfying that search query. Somebody searching for something on Google, they land on your site, they're, you know, to read that blog post, they're much more likely to buy a product when it relates to that search query. But having a shop page is definitely an addition to that where you can house all of your products in one place to be able to share on social media um, or in different blog posts as well. Um, so mine is very basic, but I just wanted to create this to show you how you can create this without having to install WooCommerce, without having to set up all that fancy stuff, um, because ultimately the more plugins that you add, it does slow down your site. So as you can see, um, this is, there's three columns here and I have mine broken down by like the types of products and my products are actually sold in different places. So these are all available via my Etsy store, right? And so um, each one has kind of just the cover image here. And then I have a buy now button that I added and that links to the exact product listing on my Etsy store. Um, you can click over here and it goes right over to Etsy. And then of course, that's where they're going to check out. I personally don't wanna deal with um, PayPal and people's you know, credit cards and all of that. So all of my products are sold through a third party platform. Let me close that. And then I also have uh, my newest stuff. So these are all my coloring pages and those are available on Etsy. Um, right now I will be adding more. Um, and my most recent product is my prayer journal. I let go in like a prayer journal. And I actually sell this through Gumroad. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of different places you can sell. And I totally could have sold it through Etsy. And I probably will add this to my Etsy listings as well. Um, but this is something I know more, more Christian bloggers could actually promote for me. And so through uh, these other third party platforms, I'm able to offer an affiliate program. And although Etsy does have an affiliate program, it's very hard for Christian bloggers to get accepted to it. So this was the alternative. So how do we build this? So in Gutenberg, now it's going to be different if you're using the classic editor. I actually just started using Gutenberg in the last couple of months, and it is so versatile and so easy to create a shop page. I'm really other page, your resource pages and everything else, um, using the different block components. And so all these are, so I'm just going to scroll down here and start something new here. So I'm going to add just so I can separate this. So what I did for the top one, I used columns and then I wanted them three across, right? And so I chose the three block. And then as you can see here, I just uploaded my cover image for my Etsy shop, like each product's cover image in my Etsy store that says what it is and has a little picture of it, right? So I just upload the image and I'm just gonna put that in there to show you. I'm not actually gonna save this since it's already live. I'm gonna add that there. Um, I don't make it, I, I disable the pinning. I have tasty pins, so I would disable that. 
now that it's in here, and I would, again, add the other two here. So I want it to look like a store, so I want the Buy Now button. Now, I could just put some text right here and make it clickable, right? But I want it to look like a store. So right under this one, I'll add a button, and that is under Layout Elements, right? And so I want to center it. Oops, that's not what I want. It's kind of tricky sometimes to click on it. And then I'm going to change the color of this to whatever blue I was using. I'm just going to pick a blue here. Just a little brighter, whatever, right? And then I'm going to hop over to my Etsy store and grab the actual link to my product, right? The URL to that particular listing. And I will plug it right in here. I'm going to select open in a new window and hit enter. And that is how you get it to look just like this, right? And, and of course, I would type in here, um, buy now. You could say whatever. I mean, I just put buy now on mine. And I would center it um, here. So I want to make it centered so that the button is directly under it, as you can see in these. Um, and so that's how you would do it. Uh, you would you know, do one set of three. Now my prayer journal only have one, but I still put the three columns in here. I'm only using one of them, right? So even though they're there, it's not displaying anything. It's just a blank space, but it keeps them in those straight lines. That used to be really hard to do that with the classic editor, but by using columns, it makes it super easy um, to keep them all aligned. As long as you're using the same size images, everything will line up um, perfectly. Now, of course, you could add some additional text in here if you wanted to elaborate on things or whatever. Um, so if you're literally just getting started, you only have a few products, this would be the simple way to get your shop up and running. Of course, do um, I personally have mine set to no index in my Yoast settings. I actually have rank math, but for most of you, it's Yoast. I set it to no index. There's no SEO value to this page. It's probably not going to get indexed because really nobody's searching for, you know, Kingdom Blogger shop, right? Like, I mean, they might, but I will get traffic from this by creating Pinterest pins, linking it in my navigation menu, linking it maybe in some blog posts, sharing it on social media, and so forth. Um, now, there's other block elements that you could use to make it look even cooler. Um, some other ones that you can use include like the media and text. And that's where it has an image on one side and text on the other. And then the second one, you could flip it to where, so this one is a picture and then the button, you could put the buy now button here. On this side, you put the buy now button. In other words, where it flip flops as it's going down. Um, you can also use these other elements inside these columns, right? So the column just creates columns. And then within the column, you can add any other element here. Um, so, okay, so that's how you basically would create the page. I mean, it's super simple. You don't need WooCommerce. You don't need all that other stuff. Um, now, again, this is the way I do it, but I don't have my own internal payment gateway, right? My stuff is sold, sold through another place. And so let's talk about that. So Etsy, of course, many of you have Etsy shops. It's you know, Etsy's free to use. They only really, I mean, you pay 20 cents per month per listing. And so I wouldn't go in there and make a whole bunch of stuff, maybe start with one or two, make sure there's at least a need for them. So you're not spending that 20 cents each every month. Um, and then they take a course of commission every time you make a sale, but still it's a free platform to use. So I definitely recommend putting your products out there, but then also selling it through another platform that enables you to offer an affiliate program. And this is important because if you don't offer an affiliate program, you're basically doing all the work. And the only people seeing it are those that are your audience. Like if you don't understand SEO and you're not getting a lot of organic traffic, then it's going to be harder and harder to get more and more people to see your products. Right. Or I mean, you can be sharing it on social media all the time and everything. But when you have affiliates, now your products get put in front of their audience and their followers and their subscribers. So this is why I always recommend having, if, if you're going to do Etsy, that's fine because Etsy does market your stuff for you. And so you can get some additional traffic from there, 
but within their Christian blogger community, you know, this also provides an avenue for other creatives to earn money through affiliate marketing of your products, right? So it's kind of a win for both sides. So some of the more common ones, so many of you have probably heard of Send Owl. Um, there's, so I use Gumroad. Uh, Send Owl is another one. And PayHip is another one. Um, now, as far as which one is better, really, you need to do your research. So, um, you know, you need to understand what your state's requirements are for like sales tax. Um, do you have to collect sales tax on your specific type of digital download? And this is really like, it's hard territory to charter by yourself. So I definitely recommend that you go speak. Um, with a, a tax professional in your community, like just Google CPA for your area. Um, many of them do free consultations. And even if they charge you for it, it's definitely worth that investment. You can write it off in your taxes to make sure you're doing it correctly. Some states are considered a nexus state. Um, and so you can just Google that, any XUS nexus state. And that has to do with how you collect sales tax when your customers are like not in your state, right? So Texas is not a nexus state. Um, so mine's a little different than maybe some of yours, but it does apply to affiliate marketing and many other things. So you do need to know what your next, if you are a nexus state and what the rules are. But more importantly, or maybe equally importantly, is understanding, you know, if you had a craft, if you did crafts and you went to a craft fair and physically sold your products to someone there at the craft fair, you have to collect sales tax, right? And then you remit that to the state and to your county and everything. Well, in the digital world, many of our products are taxable. And it's um, not a black and white thing to figure out online. So you really need to talk to a tax professional to ensure um, if and if so, how are you to collect that sales tax and then of course remit it to um, the higher authority. But each of these platforms deals with it differently. And so that's why you need to really do your research and see which one works best for you and your unique situation. Also VAT, you see here this EU VAT. So this is sort of like a tax. Um, I guess that's the best way to classify it, but it's for customers who are outside of the US, they pay an additional like tax for things purchased in the United States called a VAT. And so you wanna make sure how that's being collected. And while you may say, well, I don't market to people in the U, as Christian bloggers, you will see as you look through your Google Analytics, we do actually get a lot of traffic from Europe, um, actually from a lot of other countries um, outside of the US. And so you don't wanna discount those customers. And so you wanna ensure that you're, um, collecting that tax, that VAT properly. Now, some of some of these, I think, um, Sendel, I, I do believe, will, it takes care of it for you. Um, other ones keeps it, a, like, tallies of it and shows you how to do it. So you just want to make sure that you understand all of that. Like, it's not as simple as just going online and selling your stuff. We have to pay taxes, <laughs> and you need to make sure you're paying them correctly. But I can't give you advice on doing that because I'm not a tax professional, and I'm also in Texas. And so every state has different requirements. And so you definitely want to speak to a tax professional about that part of it when you get to the point of creating and selling your own digital products. Um, so anyway, um, you can check all these out. Again, Etsy, I definitely recommend because they'll continue to market your stuff and it's a very low fee to, to list your items. Now I am using Gumroad and I'm on the free plan, so I don't pay to use it. However, they will take a 5% commission on every sale that I make, which is fine because I'm not paying a monthly fee, right? So again, do your research. And then once you've created your product, so I'll just show you what mine looks like here. Um, open, open. You can see my product page and it has all the information. And so when they click buy now, it'll pop them over here to see the full product. Um, there's a checkout page, right? Um, there's a place to enter discount codes and everything. And so you can actually embed this, like this embed thing to where it'll look like this in the blog post. So if you have like a landing page, not necessarily your store. Um, so again, just different options and different abilities within each of these. So do your research, figure out which one works best for you. 
Um, and again, the reason I recommend these is simply because they allow you to offer an affiliate program. So other people can sign up to promote your products and earn a small commission that you set. So um, let me close these out really quick. So again, creating the page here in WordPress is super easy. Now again, if you want to use WooCommerce, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, that it was just a lot of moving parts for me and I'm a very simplistic type person. Like I want less is better. And so with this, I didn't have to install any extra plugins. I'm literally just building it with the Gutenberg blocks and making it look how I want. So as I add more products, I'll add more columns here. I may rearrange it um, and so forth. But anyway, um, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions at all, just comment below. Um, and I would love to see your pages once you start getting them created. Feel free to share them in this thread. Um, and that way others can pop by and see what you have, maybe inspire them for creating some things or maybe they'll go shopping. Um, but either way, um, let me know if you have any questions?